Welcome back to Maintainer's Garage. I'm back. Today we're going to be changing the oil on my wife's SLK 350. It's a 2013 uh, model. And no, I haven't done this video before and ended up deleting it because I didn't realize I'd done it. But that's another story altogether. It's fairly straightforward, fairly simple thing. It does have a little difference. Well, a lot of European cars have the uh, remote, <laughs> remote oil filter. It's not a dry sump, it's just a remote filter. It's actually in the upper portion of the engine bay. And you got to have a special tool unless you want to use channel locks or something like that, like this. And this is a son of a, don't mock me. I'm getting old. And yeah, as you get older, you have these everywhere. And the ones that are abused the most go to the garage. Exactly. So this is a 74 millimeter, 14 flute oil wrench, fil oil filter wrench adapter. You can pick up at AutoZone. Napa, O'Reilly's, your, uh, Harbor Freight, wherever. And I like these a lot. These make the job simple. You'll see when I use it where it is. And I'll, sh I'll show you that before we uh, start pulling it off and all that. And you need an oil filter as well. And inside the oil filter should come a new O-ring for that uh, canister cap that you screw down. You always want to change that uh, O-ring as well and get a little filter. Whatever brand filter you use, fine. I'm not going to get into the, the countless debates that you can have on the internets about this brand is better than this brand is better than that brand. Not going to happen. Uh, torque wrench will come in handy. If you don't have it, you can still do the job. I don't use a torque wrench on the drain plug. Snug is what I use on that. But on that cap, that uh, remote oil filter cap, I actually do use my torque wrench on that and an oil containment device again you don't have to have this it'll just make the job a whole lot less messy you do absolutely have to have motor oil uh, these take 0w40 uh, i forget which spec it is it's mercedes-benz 229.3 or 229.5 but 0w40 i believe it's seven quarts it's in the manual i'll make sure i put that down here we'll talk i'll double check i've got the manual just not out here and some sort of wrench. I believe it's a 12 millimeter. Uh, when I get under the car, I'll find out. I'll tell you right here what I found out because of the power editing. All right. Yeah, I think I've covered that. We've got oil. We've got a container. We've got a filter. We've got an O-ring. Our car is on wooden ramps. You can jack the side of the car up if you want. There is no plastic or metal under tray. So if you just have some drive-on ramps, that'll be fine. You don't need to... Uh, get up under the car and uh, take anything off. But if you're going to uh, ramp up your car like I have, just make sure you put some chalks behind it, set the e-brake. That way your car doesn't roll away if the pops out of gear or what have you. All right, I think we're ready to pop the hood and get into this. If you're looking for the hood release, the hood release as you come into the car, as you look under here, it is this red handle looking thing. Uh, there we go. Just grab it and pull. Then you go up to the front of the car. Now you've got the hood released. If you look under here, that lever arm right there, you just reach in, pull up, stick your hand in there, thumb, fingers, whatever, pull up on that all at the same time. And you can see that's what you just released. And voila, you have access to the engine bay now. All right, we've got our hood open all the way here. This little cap right here is where the oil will be filled at. This cover, grab, pull right off. Got random tabs uh, inside of it. Has random tabs uh, that help hold it on. Put it off to the side so you don't uh, step on it, break it, damage it, kick it. The cap right there, that's a little better. And that's our oil filter housing. That's remote housing. It is a plastic composite cap so yeah so the filter sits there and i know it seems kind of weird because it seems like it'd be upside down but the uh fill and drain are on the bottom of it so when you take this off there will not be a lot of oil in there it's not like it's going to drain down from the bottom it's not like your standard oil filter that uh sits in there like this and the oil fills in sits in upside down this sits in right side up so as you unscrew this cap and pull off the oil drain is already there. 
there won't be a lot uh, of that, but we'll get into that. We'll see that. All right, let's get under the car. As we come under the car, you can see the ramps that I have. They're just standard uh, two by tens that I built up. They work for my Corvette and my LX and this vehicle. So, and then you can see our oil container there. So as you come, you'll see there's some plastic bits here and there as well. So there's that plastic bit. As you go back just a little more, there's a little red line right there. Your, your car may have, uh, this may have worn off that bolt right there. That size. And what the heck is that? All right. So as you saw, we are excellent testing effort. 13 millimeter. Get that on there. And lefty loosey. Lefty righty. So lefty loosey, as you just saw, we'll bring our oil uh, containment device up here. If you've been driving the car, oil might be hot. Be careful. Otherwise, you'll be fine. And I will say this, once it starts going here, I will loosen the oil fill cap up, up top, just to allow it to breathe and drain a little easier. Uh, that was told to me long ago, and I didn't point it out in my last oil change video, but I'll point it out in this one. And yeah, you might get a little dirty, that's fine. Wear gloves if you like. And once you have your drain plug out, you can just wipe it down real good before you reinstall it. All right, so we've uh, clearly let that drain a while. We'll make sure we wipe up our little spill here. Make sure we wipe down our drain plug and reinstall. And I do not know what the torque on this is. I will find out later and put it down in the video. Well, I'll put it in the video like I always do. Just make sure this thing is started by hand really, really, really well. You do not want to cross thread this, strip this out. It'll be a bad day in the office at that point. And take your 13 millimeter device and we're going to go snug and not everybody's snug is the same mine might be different than yours so if you're not comfortable with your snug get a torque wrench but it's not a ton and you're going to do a, a leak check on this anyway once you add oil to it to see how uh make sure it's not draining out of here or the uh, oil filter but now we'll go up top and change the oil filter. See on here, maybe, um, you know, nothing crazy about, uh, yeah. Right there is the label, nothing crazy. 71 millimeter, 74 millimeter. Uh, the torque is 25.5 newton meters. It's right on this cap. I will actually torque that down and put it on Lefty Lucy. And that simple. Because of how I was saying how this is set up earlier, this screws into the housing down there. So there will be a very small amount of oil that comes out with the filter. You still want something to catch it, but yeah. This threads down there, there is the O-ring that came with our new oil filter. When you, I don't hate doing this over the car, but there is a recessed or a, a protruding plastic retainer that that filter has to snap into. That, so you've just kind of got to grab and pull and separate this and it's being a jerk. So I'm going to do it somewhere else that's not right here. So. Yeah, you can see the hole in the filter, the, eh, maybe, the protruding device down there. Fingernail pick, whatever you use to pull this old gasket off. Whatever works for you works. Whatever, uh, dispose of that, however you dispose of that. You can look down in the housing. This is not like a standard uh, oil filter that's got a, uh, gasket attached to it that could be stuck up in there 
the O-rings right there. You just saw me remove it. You know it's removed. But you can look down in this little metal housing, see if there's anything in there that, you know, may make you want to freak out a little bit. But there isn't. No metal shavings, no nothing weird. And you can just take your gasket. There'll be a tiny bit of oil down in there. You can just touch that, lube this up. And as you're putting it on this, <laughs> it helps if I'm on the camera. As you're putting it on this, don't grab your your o-ring here and tr pull the snot out of it to get it down in this thing just do it as easily and gently as possible because if you uh, over stretch that thing it may never go back to normal and hopefully there is a channel there's a lower lip there or an upper lip there lower lip there it's actually that's the bottom lip that's the upper lip when it's sitting in the car but that o-ring sits inside that channel make sure you get it all the way into that then you take your new filter it's got the little whole dealy do snaps right in wipe these threads off and insert screw down by hand and then grab your torque wrench um, you can snug it if you want, a 25 and a 0.5 newton meter, something like 19 foot-pounds, uh, I believe, off the top of my head. Like I said, uh, the conversion from 25.5, if I remember correctly, I'll Google this to make sure I've got it correctly, I believe is 19 or 20 foot-pounds. Um, it'll be somewhere down in here now. Anytime you're using an extension, just try to keep it straight as possible. And also on this tool, I found you sit it on there and then you put this on. This will not go all the way. The extension won't go all the way into the tool, but the tool will sit flat on the cap and that's more important. So you just righty tighty and that's it. It's not a lot. We'll add some oil in our oil fill port. See where we are. Always don't forget to turn your uh, torque wrench to zero before you put it away. Our funnel in here and add our 0W40. If I remember correctly, the owner's manual, I believe, states seven quarts. I have the owner's manual. I'm going to pull it out here in a second. But I know it's more than five quarts. And so I'm just going to add my entire five quart jug here. And after I get this five quarts finished up, I will look under the vehicle to see if the drain plug is at least snug enough and good enough to hold oil while it's cold. All right, yeah, let's check our drain plug. All right, no leaks down below. We're gonna add about two quarts here. And uh, Mercedes has an interesting way of checking the oil level. They're like, yeah, start the car, get the car warm, turn the car off. Uh, Pull the dipstick out, put it back in. If it's between min and maximum, it's good. You're like, really? Min to max is good. Not uh, kind of upper, you know, max, not towards min. Anywhere in the min max range is good. And that will do it. That's just about two quarts out of that one. We'll pull our little uh, funnel out, put our drain cap back on, and you can see the uh, international faucet symbol. That's your international symbol for oil. And we'll put it to where that way when we tighten it, it faces forward. I'm weird like that. Make sure to clean your funnel out. Now we're going to uh, start our car and look for leaks. All right, so we've checked our filter housing here. No leaks anywhere around it. We've gone underneath the car and with the camera, as you can see down there, there's no le oil leaks down there. Now what we'll do is we'll just put our plastic trim piece back on. All right, now we've got our plastic trim piece. It's got a cutout for that and a little gauge there. Just kind of tap it in. And 
All right, we'll close the hood, back the car up, bring it in the garage, get it level, let it sit for about 30 minutes. The dipstick's back here out of focus, or out of frame. I'll show you that when we get to that. Stick your finger through it and pull the uh, dipstick out, and there should be a little oil on it. You want to wipe it off, and then the key is to put it back in, and count to about three, pull it out, and what you're going to want to see is an eye, so the fluid is about right there, that's about middle, on here, I don't know if they'll come on the camera, it says men, there's a maximum word there, so that little lip right there is men, that little lip right there is maximum, we're about midway in. If I added uh, a hair of oil, wouldn't be a problem. If I wanted to leave it right there, not a problem. Dealer's choice. Speaking of dealer's choice, I will show you how to reset the uh, service indicator light. My service indicator light's not on. Mercedes-Benz oil change intervals roughly are between 10 and 12,000 miles. I do not agree with that. Make of it what you will, do whatever you want to your vehicle, however you handle it. You're not wrong, you're not right, just is. I change my wife's oil between five and 7,000 miles. It's typically closer around the 6,000 mile mark is when I do it. Driving conditions always vary. If you track your car, you do autocross, I would change it more. If you, you know, live down in Miami, Florida and you're a lot in stop of go traffic and it's, you know, hotter than Hades down there, I would change it uh, a little more often as well. But anyway, that's checking the oil level. I'm happy with it. It's good. It's right in the middle of that mark. So no worries. And sometime going in the future, we're just going to do the oil interval service uh, reset. All right. So my, uh, because I've changed my oil earlier than what this thing recommended, I had to wait for the service light to come up to show you this. I'm going to reset this without any computers. I do have a Ucanic uh, computer to do a whole bunch of stuff on this, and there will be a review coming out on this shortly because it's awesome. But if you don't have a device, you can do it with just the steering wheel. What you're going to have to do is there's a hang-up button here, the uh, make-a-call button here. So you press the make-a-call button, and then you'll press and hold the OK button. And you have to hold both of them for about three to four seconds and the menu pops up up in here. We're going to start by turning the car to the first position. Well, actually, let me show you uh, all this without your foot on the brake pedal. So the first position, the dial sweep airbag light comes on. The second position, everything lights up. And if you go down to the um, to assist plus, you'll see that it's uh, next service and service A in 900 miles. So it's close enough to where you can reset it. All right, so now we'll turn everything back off. We'll press the start stop button one time again. Foot not on the brake pedal. And oh, I put us, I got us in the wrong menu. We need to be in the menu, not that menu, because you'll notice when you're at the mile per hour here, if you press the make a phone call, then press the OK button. If you hold it for a real long time, nothing ever happens. You have to be in the display where it shows you your trip odometer and your current mileage. Then when you press the make a call, then the OK button, and you hold them for, again, three to five seconds, this new menu comes up, and that's really bright. Let's see if I can, there we go, get that better in focus. Then you come down to Assist Plus. You do full service. Confirm, full service. Those are your two oil grades. Mobile 10W40 is those two oil grades. So you can pick either one. Yes, we want to confirm. And you're using the down arrows, obviously, here. Full service carried out. And we'll wait for it to get back. And then... And there we go. So then we'll press this, 
uh, press the start stop button, press it one more time, and we'll come back to the assist menu. And that's when our next service is. And that's it. You're done. And that's how you uh, change your oil, reset your oil service light. Anyway, that's the end of that. Thanks for watching Maintainer's Garage. Have a great day.